how are you both doing? Eh. Not too bad. Yeah, really how are you doing? Not too bad. I really appreciate you uh, both coming on the podcast, uh, Cynthia and Alex. It's uh, it's really good. And thank you for scaring me, by the way, with your film. <laughs> oh, glad we could. Glad Our we pleasure. Could. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, can you tell me a little bit about... Uh, if for people who haven't seen the film yet, um, it will it will be show, uh, showcased uh, on the twentieth with uh, a lot of the other films. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your film and how you kind of came to uh, put it together? Yeah, so you you wrote it. Oh, you put throw it to me. Okay, <laughs> uh, so th- we were seeing a lot of these things of doing this, the social isolation uh, film con- contests and uh-huh. several of them and we thought well this would be kind of fun to just to put something together and and having to work in the constraints of having to do something that's isolated that's only with us in the house and um uh with what we have available to us and shooting it on the iphone so it was the challenge that i was first uh, first wanted to do it and then um we kind of like the that genre of a little bit thriller a little spooky yeah, me stuff too. So, yeah, me too. so but we wanted to not follow the 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 without giving any spoilers away we didn't want to just do the typical jump scares just alluding to it but then we wanted a a little bit of a a twist to a it subtle. yeah yeah absolutely um because you kind of uh there's a couple of credits I wanted to touch upon, Alex, uh, in just a sec. That you've got obviously got experience in TV and uh, movies, and you've obviously seen from small budgets to huge budgets as well. And was it was this the first time you'd shot on an iPhone or anything like this? Uh, well, um, not really. Well, first time that to try to actually do like uh, a narrative uh, on an iPhone. Obviously, yeah. we've shot like little. Uh, fun music video type projects or stuff <laughs> like that. Just, but is that that's mostly for fun or for YouTube or you know. Just, this is our first like serious project. Yeah. That we've with an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll, so this is this is one that where I actually you know planned out the shots and and kind of uh, yeah figured out how I was going to light in a very small room and what we had available. That and was a fun. Time. Also, <laughs> also, there's this big giant mirror doors in the in the <laughs> shot. So having to film, there was a few times where okay, we have to redo really that again because I saw myself in the. Oh yeah, yeah. well it's it's hap- it happened to Spielberg early on. It happened in uh, quite a few other films to other directors, like in Spiel in uh, Duel, you know Spielberg's TV movie. He's in right. the ref- he's in the reflection of the telephone box with the script right. in, with the script in hand, looking up and down. Yeah, so. amazing. There's a shot, and it's still there. Uh, I still saw it on the DVD of the Christopher Reeve Superman the movie, when he and Lois get caught in the in the revolving doors. You see oh. the reflection of the cameraman looking up and laughing. That's amazing. If you if you freeze it, you see him. Oh, that's cool. clearly I, in the reflection. I, I love those little moments. I love those little moments. I guess I guess one of the biggest issues technologically at the moment is. Because everything's so like uh, high def and 4K, especially the reflections on glasses and sunglasses is the you know because you've got these big reflective mm-hmm. boards as well. So, yeah, you did well, especially in such you yes. know uh, tight proximity to the rest of the the room and everything. Uh, so, uh, Cynthia, you've you know you've got uh, some really interesting experience with uh, uh, All from the Black, and so you kind of yes. the tone of tone of this film's not too far removed from what you've done before so oh uh, no so was it a lot of fun doing this um kind of it was um it was a little stressful because um of course with all the mirror shots there was a lot of redoing takes um but it was fun i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily say it was more fun than shooting more from black because that was like a very new experience for me and it was like a lot of new people it was super fun um but it's just because it was a smaller project but i still enjoyed doing it yeah so um how long did it take to shoot the film two nights two nights yeah we shot it in two nights and uh, Um, i love the effect i won't give it away but the effect that sells it at the end Mm -hmm. that's really well achieved because i was thinking is it have they replaced on the phone? I was I kept trying to think how you've done it, but that's, that's the achievement I think is that 
And that's the real like, oh my God. Because I watched it. Uh, we've just gone through our review process now because we're having our awards and showcase on the 20th of June. And I watched it with, I've watched it several times already, but I'm watching my uh, family. <laughs> and you should have seen, <laughs> should have seen my partner and her dad. They were terrified. <laughs> they loved it. Oh, themselves. excellent. Because it's, you see, it's so friendly to begin with. Obviously, you know something sinister with the music and everything. And I think one of the best beats is the three dots, you know, like waiting for someone's mm-hmm. text. So yeah. Automatic think, anxiety. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that anxiety, Cynthia, that's, uh, it really kind of pushes it because you get those immediate messages from your friend about going out. And then you've got this, this beat of what's going on, what's going on. And yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'd love to, because this. I have uh, to. Give, sorry, go on. No, I was. I, I had. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. It. No, I no, have no. to give credit. I have to give credit to Cynthia. That was actually her idea for adding the th- the three dots. She said because that's just <laughs> suspenseful on a day to day basis. Every single day. Oh my god. Yeah, and it, it's such a modern thing as well. Uh, if yeah. you see that on a message, you do linger, don't you, Cynthia? With uh, mm-hmm. it's from a friend. Oh, what have they got to say? And then yeah, exactly. The worst thing uh, that people probably look at when they see those dots, but they don't see the message appear because the person's changed their mind. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Or, so I th- or sometimes I think- where I think that that's happened where, and it's happened because I've, I've then uh, been in a text conversation with my wife and then she said, what happened? You were texting something in response. No, I wasn't, but it was because I had, you like accidentally pressed a space bar or something. Space bar or registers. something, and so it registered that I was oh, still typing. I, I yeah. did that a lot. But I didn't actually, wasn't actually typing anything. But she was saying, <laughs> you were you were typing and typing for a while. No, I wasn't. And then I look and I, oh, oh yeah, I guess. So the- <laughs> yeah. Was that, so the writing process for this short film, was it was it something you spoke to Cynthia about in terms of the language used? You know, because yes. if you try yes, to write for... Much. Cynthia, it might not come across like Cynthia might read that and go, I, that's not how I speak. But obviously, was there a bit of an exchange about how, what kind of... Yes. Yes, yes there was. <laughs> it was. Uh, and also, because I, 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 I wrote up a, a draft uh, in, the, in the middle of the night because my whole timeline has changed. Like schedule? Why yeah. is that? Like... <laughs> yeah. So in the next day, I said, I've emailed her a draft. I said, here's the... Um, here's what I've written. Can you just go through it and uh, correct my teen speak? <laughs> the first draft was very um, out of date teen speak. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and e- and even some places where she she condensed it. She's saying don't need to say we this don't much. Need to that we much. don't <laughs> we don't we don't need to text that <laughs> Too much. Too many abbreviations. Yeah. yeah, because then it's how people consume that as well. So like myself mm-hmm. or anyone else watching your film anything to 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 kind of padded it would be like it's almost like lost energy lost energy in the pacing of your film yeah Mm -hmm. uh so just on that kind of teen speak that you both mentioned when you do a larger project or a feature film and you've got to look at the script how and say you've got a, a writer in his 30s or older or something like that how do they how do they get to that point is it do they actually consult with younger actors about the kind of the language of the things or do they kind of stick to the word do you think um well having actually uh because part of my day job if you want to call that is i work as a script supervisor on on in film and television and we recently worked on um on Netflix uh, dance film that's that's coming out. It's coming out very soon. This month. Uh, it's coming out this month uh, yeah. on Netflix. Uh, Feel the beat, uh, but I do know that with that they they workshopped it a little bit. They had the the kids out for uh, I I don't even know how long doing dance rehearsals and dance training, um, but then they would go through read through with with the the the, the scripts and talk with the the teenagers I guess to so that it it did sound more familiar and more the, yeah and I know yeah, that the absolutely. director the director had a really good rapport with the, the um with the young cast yeah and making sure that it sounded sounded right so I think that's uh, and I guess it it, yeah. it differs from project to project every director is different um, but I would imagine. Um, Although you watch a lot of shows and you say teenagers don't speak that all way. the time, <laughs> so so. But that was from my experience recently that yeah. they they did work 
um, with that. I don't. You have not, to. It's not that you have teenagers on on staff, so to speak, but um, like Just to consult. if I was writing one, I would be running it by Cynthia. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, that's it. I guess that if you're writing a script and you have uh, kids of the right age or you know friends of the family or something or, or nieces or nephews it would make a lot of sense to not necessarily show the entire script but have an idea making sure the energy's right because i've seen it when i was younger i've watched shows and gone that's not how we speak it just sounds yeah. ridiculous you know uh <laughs> but yeah it was uh i take it was that not necessarily a concern when you worked on uh, orphan black because that's quite a was it 19 20 episodes you worked in cynthia something like that uh, I don't. Sorry, for yourself. Yeah. Oh, for her character, her character, she was a bit of a an no, odd, no at all. <laughs> an odd, isolated yeah. character who isn't around other yeah, kids. Yeah, she didn't really know a lot of lingo. So, she, she so was very. She was raised by scientists. Both <laughs> both versions of her that she was, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. So she so, wasn't. Uh, how much? Uh, how much fun was that to work on? Oh, um. I was also, I was very young, so some of the aspects I didn't quite totally have, but I really, as I was like 12, I really enjoyed the experience and working with all these new people. Um, the character herself was very interesting to work with too, because she's similar to me, but also not. Like, I played Charlotte as sort of just like myself, but more closed off more like know-it-all i have to do my homework which is totally not me at all i hate homework with a passion but um <laughs> she's very um because she's so isolated ha, um yeah. she doesn't know all the social things so i found that really interesting to play with when i was playing charlotte yeah it's uh what um what season did you start on i started at the end of season two and did you realize how uh, kind of popular the show was? Obviously, you were 12, but and it's difficult. To I was actually eight them. when I started. I was oh, wow. very small. Um, I, I actually can't remember if I knew the show was that popular at the beginning. I know for sure by season three, I was like, oh, this is a pretty big show. Yeah. This is cool. But I can't remember what my first thought was. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. That a, a friend of mine worked on a, a show uh, as a runner it, almost 20 years ago called uh, Band of Brothers. And when she talked about working on that, obviously she told me who the producers were. And I'm like, wow, that's a serious uh, piece of material. And you, no one knows, you know, like, like Lost when it first came out, uh, like the first, you know, if people talked about it when it's being produced, no one, no one knows, do they? It's like any show, really. Mm -hmm. But it must be incredibly exciting to kind of have that as a as a really strong credit to have as well. Yeah, yeah. that's a that's also a good both examples with like Band of Brothers and Lost. Uh, both casts were relatively unknown. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, and now they're super famous. Starting out, and you know, like you look at Band of Brothers, and it's a phenomenal cast. But they were all, and I, I remember uh, seeing that the an interview with uh, the casting director. She purposely wanted to cast unknowns so yeah. that there wasn't a familiarity you didn't know these people you were only knowing them as these characters absolutely because you've got i think it was tom hardy's first real credit yeah and and, uh, and same michael, with james mcavoy was uh yeah. michael fassbender um, as well yeah. yeah yeah so it's it's crazy andrew that, scott like, as well was just was referred to as a kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah so it's pretty fantastic I've uh, I did obviously have a look at uh, both your uh, IMDb's, which is kind of always kind of my go-to. And right, yeah, definitely. Uh, can you tell me a little about a little bit about working in the props department? Was it on frequency? Oh yes. Because <laughs> I've um, got to say, I it does, no matter how big or small, I love that movie. I yeah. Seriously, I I think the connection Jim Caviezel really sells it. Uh, yeah. And. Can you tell me a little bit about your role on set? Because this is the thing we're we're finding with people that have submitted films. They've got credits in, you know, a vast array of, uh, of uh, fields and prop departments. Really fascinating to me. So, can you tell me a little bit about your experience on that? Uh, that I was working near the end of their Toronto shoot because they they shot in Toronto for a while and then they went 
uh, down to New York to do their exterior stuff down in New York. So I was working on that just near the end. And it was just uh, because they had the 19, they had, they actually had four sets that were identical. They had the 1969 set, the 1999 set, the alternate 1969 set, and the alternate 1999 set. Oh, so they actually both all together. Four. Yeah, they were all there, and you could go from one to the other really quickly. Oh. And so it was. It was. Uh, I was working basically as a daily. So that's. I wasn't a permanent crew member, but I was there for uh, several days with going back and forth with the, doing these prop stuff uh, on set. Um, I got to meet uh, um, Dennis Quaid. So he was... Um, yeah, I think it was I think it was a really solid film for both the actors. And I can't remember the actor's name that plays the police chief. He's in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Andre. Yeah, he's, oh, I'm he's fantastic in that. Yeah. yeah. His first name is Andre. I love Brooklyn yes. Nine-Nine. <laughs> Because I've got, you know, like whenever you watch big movies, the three of us can attest to this. It Sometimes you see an actor and you love their performance and you remember them for all, that's the starting point for you. So when I yeah. saw that, I, I think I think it was Jim Caviezel. I think it was Thin Red Line when I remember, really remember him uh, really well. And then Frequency just kind of connected. I think the two of them did such a fantastic job. Uh, and yeah, it must have been a lot of film, uh, fun to work on that. Yes. Um, and I think Jim was also then in his off time working on working with a sword choreographer for another film project, which I think <laughs> was the Count of Monte Cristo, if I'm remembering correctly. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so he was doing that. So he, any time that he wasn't on set with, for frequency, he was out in the parking lot working with this, oh, I guess going that, over sword choreography. I guess that happens quite a lot because you, you know, you're staggering your productions and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and there's just one little last uh, credit Alex would like to talk about. In the Tall Grass, that's another tonally quite a special film, isn't it? Yes, that one I filled in though as a script supervisor on second unit. So I didn't, I wasn't involved in that project very much. It was mostly for a lot of the drone shots that were done um, okay. on on off days. So I didn't actually get to spend a lot of time on that one. Do you know how big, just out of curiosity, I don't know if you've seen that film, Cynthia. Have you seen it in the tall grass? I don't think so, no. No, yeah. How big, how big was the um, corn kind of area they were actually filming in, doing the night, night stuff? Was that studio-based? No, that was out, uh, in, the, out in the farmlands. Um, well, the one that we were, because we were doing some of the drone shots and flying over that and seeing the people running through it. And that was out uh, near Stratford, Ontario, um, is, is where we were, we were filming that stuff. And they had built that, that, we were filming around that old church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is seen it. But that church is only, it's only the facade uh, of yeah. that, of that church. The, the, the rest of it, that's where all the, um, camera equipment and stuff was stored in behind where you <laughs> that's a where very you that's it. a very clever move that isn't it yeah yeah i remember i remember seeing a tour video of uh i think it was universal studios in la something like that and they he walk uh this this tour guy walks around the psycho house and obviously if you know anything about movies that it's only it's only about this thickness is built and then the rest of it's mm -hmm. just a facade so yeah, yeah that's uh it's uh i really enjoyed that movie it's quite a sinister dark uh especially patrick wilson who's a i think he's a superb actor he, i don't think he's had his huge movie yet if you know what i mean i think he's always been yeah. super consistent um mm -hmm. so have you two kind of shot stuff before this or are you kind of planning to shoot together uh after this well we had uh shot um but uh, it's actually coming up to almost two years now. It's been almost two years since which, we shot a short film. Which we shot it, and it was with a couple other people from Orphan Black were in it. The other little girl from Orphan Black Skyler was... Skyler and was Andrew in Gillies. It, and Andrew Gillies, who played... Um, Rachel's father. Yeah, and uh, he's he's done a, tons of, of his... Oh, his, he's everywhere. His theater background is, oh. is immense. Yeah. Uh, fantastic actor. Many credits. And um, But we shot that... And it took us forever because, of course, we're people are doing favors for you know a small little little project. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the sound. The sound took a long time. It took a long time to. It needed to be completely remixed and redone. Yeah. So that really? took a while. And the now they only. What was the problem? The sound was it recorded to be used, and then it was just a mess well. Or well, ninety percent of it was exterior, and we live near an airport, so there's there's a lot of. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, this huge big fight scene that happens happens right next to a river, you know, because it's it's it was cool to shoot at, but terrible for sound. Good spot. The sound hated me for that. I, I can only imagine because you've got to you've got to replace everything. There's a there's a it, there's a really odd release of Alien Three. You know, David Fincher's uh, I think it's first big studio film. And yeah. There's it. It actually says in the booklet, which comes with the film, it's not a magical director's cut. There, Fox are quite sarcastic about this release. So they show uh, they put Paul McGann, the actor who played Doctor Who in a, a TV movie in the UK. He has he has a quite a prominent credit at the beginning of the film. So when you watch this Alien Three and it's a longer cut, he, it makes complete sense because he's got a lot more uh, scenes. So. They show scenes without the, with the original raw audio, and you really see or you really hear how a movie sounds before they do anything. So it's quite. Yeah. Uh, that was the first when I watched that many years ago. That version, it's the first time I really appreciated how much is removed and replaced because ADR is so important. Or ADR is yeah. important. Foley super important. Um, so yeah, it's it. It's quite a thing, isn't it? So yeah, I guess I guess when you're shooting next to a river and everything's a complete nightmare. Yeah. So yeah. The, so that one took. And now the only thing that's that's left for it is the is color correction. Is color correction. Oh my goodness. But it's that's just. Uh, and again, because everything has been on lockdown, we haven't been able to so move that, forward. Even though there's called? a lot of downtime. Hmm? What's that short called? Shadowed. Shadowed. Ah, that's the one I've seen with the uh, the kind of creepy picture, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So what's the kind yeah. of uh, premise of that? Uh, basically, a young girl, um, which is the Skylar's character, meets uh, half of a twin, si like one of the twin sisters, and they, the twin sisters seem to have this very odd relationship and a secret that they're kind of hiding. So that's that's the basic premise of it. Yeah. That's very cool. Very cool. So, funny. I'm playing twin sisters yeah. after doing a show about clowns. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the other thing. Um, Silly. There was a whole fight scene between the two twins. Oh, so right. that was worked. interesting. So how did that work exactly? Is it uh, a double, double with a wig? Yeah. We had yeah we had an acting double that she worked off. Her off, name is Sarah. And uh, then we did a visual physical swapping back and forth that the two would alternate so we did the fight scenes several times one being oh one goodness. twin one being the other twin it was a workout yeah and all the while we were filming that it was threatening to rain it was the it was clouds okay. were just we would feel a drop and oh, then it wouldn't. are we ready and then it wouldn't <laughs> and we're still yeah. going and that's why you need a that's why you need a church to pull your gear in <laughs> Exactly, yeah, but yeah. no, we didn't have that. There was such a, uh, it was such a low budget, you know, yeah, production. Yeah, absolutely. But... So oh, was no. that was that uh, Cynthia? Was that a similar thing? Because did you have to play yourself in multiple like uh, roles across the way? Is there scenes where you've got someone else looks exactly the same as you, or was your part uh, a simpler than playing you set yourself twice effectively? Um, For Orphan Black, she didn't have to play. Um, no. Yeah. Um, for Shadow, the only scene where the two twins were together was the fight scene, I think. You had a couple that? of conversations. You had two. Uh, oh, and there was a conversation scene as well, like a flashback. Yeah. It so was. How, how did you, um, how did you, is acting something you've always wanted to do? How, how did you kind of first start? <laughs> it's actually a funny story. Um, I actually first started in like dance. And I had this dance teacher, and I think she was the one who recommended an agent. Yeah. So we signed up with that, and then um, I think I was like three or four when I got my first commercial gig. It was for Tim Hortons. Um, Which is a donut place, it's a coffee donut place here in Canada. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I did some few, a few commercials from there, and then um, I booked two movies within like two years. That was very fun. Um, 
And then that, I before. That, sorry to cut. Sorry to cut you off. What's yeah. that like when you, when you. Obviously, you book something when you're very young. What's it like when you realize what you're part of? What? How exciting is that? It's again, I because I was so young, I didn't really know how to process it, but. Um, I was just a five-year-old running around on set, living her best life. I was just happy to be there. Um, I literally fell asleep at the red carpet premiere during the movie because I was five. Um, <laughs> and those pictures are interesting. But um, I think it was the second movie I was in where I was more like, wow, this is a, it was a Hallmark movie, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we were filming in Nova Scotia. And I was like, wow, this is a big movie that I'm part of. This is cool. Um, but again, I was just having fun. It wasn't until like near the end of Orphan Black where it really like hit me like, wow, I'm part of big things. This is cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Because that, <laughs> that, uh, that show translated and not translated in terms of language, but it, when it was shown in the UK, it was, it was massive here as well. So props to you props to you for that uh it's a it's a wonderful show yeah. uh and i've seen that uh, is it tatiana she's in the new um perry H mason perry mason that looks true yes yeah. you, know, you know you know hbo are the kind of gold standard aren't they yeah and that, that was the one thing um again cynthia started on orphan black when she was eight but you couldn't oh. have asked for a better acting partner to be to learn so much from oh my with, gosh with, Tad is amazing with tatiana just she is such a phenomenal uh actor and performer and such a giving person She's and so, so sweet. and such a nice person um that it was a, a for myself being not so much because i'd been on set you know i've seen all sorts of things yeah but being being the suddenly the set dad you know for the <laughs> um just how well she was treated by not not just Tatiana but by everybody on the crew of Orphan Black was so good for to her. It was and such looked, a good crew. I and miss looked them. out for her, you know. So yeah. So can um, you? Because you, you hear all sorts of horror stories of how kids are treated on set and how no, they're right. No, this was quite the opposite. And, uh, and none of the things that Cynthia has been involved with. Uh, they've all been great. They've been really good with her. So. Yeah, that's really good. How does that? Uh, just out of curiosity, because we've got a lot of. Uh, Toronto and Canadian based uh, uh, young actors and actresses. Um, how does that work on set with you being the dad and you go on set and Cynthia, does Cynthia go off and get makeup done on her own? How does it, how does it work exactly? Uh, well, technically according to the unions, you know, I, I'm supposed to be aware of where she is at all times and uh, being able, even when she's on set, I have to be able to be within that I can see her, whether yeah, it's like I'm in, whereas I either I'm uh, she's in eye shot of me or I'm seeing her on the monitors, mm -hmm. you know, so to make sure that she's safe. Uh, that's a strict rule that they have oh, here yes. in, in Canada with dealing with uh, child performers. Just make um, sure nothing is shady is going on. Yeah, but Absolutely, with yeah. but with uh, and and there were stories of in the olden days here and oh, how boy. things got. Um, yeah. how kids were treated and um even yeah. even one uh generator operator just basically shut down the power production. shut down the power yeah. because of how the a child was being treated by the director and he just yeah. shut the power but no Orphan Black wow. was great. and sometimes um there were times where like they have like the makeup trailer right and i can't remember did you stay with me in the makeup trailer or did you like go off and like get food i would i, I would i would cut i would walk <laughs> with you to to there, make sure you were fine and there, and then I would I wouldn't just hover around because it's like awkward. Yeah, <laughs> it took half I, an hour to get the braids in. Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. I used I have I have done so many things in the industry. I used to be a makeup artist. I used to do special effects makeup. Oh, very cool. Back yeah. in the nineties, so um, I didn't want to hover over the makeup artists or the hair people while they're while they're working because I found that to be annoying when I used to do that. But I would just make sure she was fine, and I would just be outside. Or and the the craft truck was usually like right in craft truck is the best part. Was right next I door, imagine, so yeah. I would so I would just get a coffee and hover that nearby. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. A lot of a lot of uh, young actors that are producing films, and we've had we've had two nine year olds produce uh, motion uh, stop motion films for our festival now. So it's oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Like when we receive something, and we had 
uh, Tegan Sellers, uh, a very young actress, she's 11. She, she had a dream about this. I won't tell you the story. You'll, you'll probably see highlights of the film soon. Uh, it's called Dark Closet. And she, she had a, I, I would say more of a nightmare than a dream. And then her mom wrote the idea down in a, uh, in a, a diary, a uh, dream book. And, right. I, and when, when they read it again, ended up becoming a really nice short film and quite an effective uh, film. So tonally, it's, it's very similar to yours, but it uh, doesn't have that sinister end towards that yours <laughs> does. Which what's, I, what's the I, name I appreciate. It's called, uh, the Dark film's Closet. called Dark Closet, yeah. yeah. Tegan Sellers is the actress. And uh, yeah, she did a, a stellar job with that. And it's really nice to see uh, all of these young actors and filmmakers produce uh, uh, some absolute quality material i'll tell you what i'll actually give you a little uh, showing of that film so uh what we're doing with every uh person we interview like the both uh, the two of you we're showing them uh one or two other little films that are part of this festival so cool. find it. how many how many films do you have submitted have so submitted? we close we close our submission process on the 31st and it's only myself and two other people that run this whole thing. And I pretty much do all the admin and everything else and uh, social media and all that. And we received 105 films in six weeks. Oh my. So we were, we've got, we've got this absolutely massive uh, music video director as a judge as well now. So we're very excited about that. He did, he's worked with Guns N' Roses, uh, Alice Cooper, uh, oh. Uh, Garth Brooks. He's just worked with Garth Brooks. Britney Spears. He's worked with everyone. So ah. he's he's called Vance Burberry. He's judging the cinematography award. But we just That's posted cool. about that yeah. yesterday. We showed somebody's show reel, and he does a lot of underwater cinematography now. So he teaches that. So oh really? He That's does a lot of it theory online. Yeah. And I con I contacted him a couple of weeks ago saying, "Would you be interested in becoming a judge?" And he's judging our cinematography award. So it's it's quite exciting. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, so he's called Vance Burberry. He's uh, super talented. And he was telling me about the making of uh, Sweet Child of Mine, which has had over a billion views on YouTube now. Yes. I love that song so much. So yeah, that he shot all of that. Vance shot all of that. And uh, I was so happy to receive a message from him. We've had a, like a back and forth about the festival. So we're sending in five films and yeah. Um, That's so cool. That is cool. <laughs> Yeah, and when when he told me about the credits, I'm like, oh yeah, I worked with. He worked on the restoration of Jaws. He worked on the restoration of Dracula, 1931. So like, I was my head was just about to explode, you know. So the. So he was he was telling me about holding the original prints from '75 for Jaws, and 1931 from Dracula. So I was like, oh my word! And he was telling me about the process, the scanning, everything, cleaning up, and everything, making the new negative. I was like, wow, that, that's, well, some, glad, that's, that's a real so trust, cool. isn't it, you know? Yes, I'm, and I'm glad they're doing that, that they're, they're preserving those. I think, oh, it's yeah. a, I think it's super important. Like, I think Universal has still got parts of Phantom of the Opera set from Lon Chaney. The Lon Chaney? From, yeah, I'm sure they've still got parts of it, yeah. And I saw a curtain in a museum in Germany from Spellbound, uh, you know, the Hitchcock film. Yes, I, I do. Think it, was all, yeah. it, was, it was the Salvador Dali piece of work with the eyeballs and everything. Yeah, uh, so for the whole nightmare sequence. Exactly, yeah. So I saw yes. that in person. I was like, it was, it was a really surreal moment, you know. So let me show you this film. That's incredible. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's getting quite exciting. And uh, yeah, we're doing our little live showcase on the 20th now. Um, that's going to be on YouTube. Yep. Let me just that. Okay, here we are. So can you see, can you see this? Yes. Yes. And then the audio, if yes, the audio, you, you will be able to hear the audio straight away. If you can't hear anything, please let me know. Okay. Okay, Anna, lights out, you have school tomorrow. But I have like two more sentences to finish. Fine, I'll be in to check on you in a few minutes, okay?
get lost. Ugh, where is my charger? Where are you? Mom? Pam, you woke me up. Mom, it's the monster again. <sighs> Gotcha. I hear you are in there. Hello? Hello? That is so cool. That was very cool. That's really creative, actually. Yeah. It's uh, that was quite a, a bit of a global uh, production because the writer and acting coach of Tegan, who's the young girl, he's based in uh, or isolated in South Africa. And, right. Uh, Tegan and her family are based in Toronto, and yeah, it's it's a wonderful little film, isn't it? Yeah. That's so cool. And so that was had, awesome. Yeah. So we had a little. Uh, we had a little uh, South Africa, UK, Toronto phone call the other day, a podcast like this. So it's, uh, we've had films from Australia, Israel, Germany, France, uh, Colombia. We had a submission from Colombia, New Zealand. We've, 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 we've been very lucky recently. So, um, and we've had, there's so much talent. I've got to say props to Canada because there's so much talent in Canada. And, um, yeah. I'm going to show you another film. Let me find. Yes. Let me find. <laughs> this is quite a clever one. This is called The Castle. We released the podcast from Chandru. Uh, he's the dad. He wrote this film. Let me find this. This is a UK based one, so we can show you what. So he's directing his two young kids in this one. Okay. Find the right one. Oh. Okay, make sure that's right. Oh yeah, we get sent so many films that are shot on an iPhone and it's in a different codex, we have to convert everything, but I've got I found it now. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay, screen one. Share. Okay. And can you see just a black screen? Yes. Yes. That the coronavirus outbreak could today. become a pandemic. The number, number of cases soaring just today. In Death toll in Spain is still behind Italy. Europe has now become the epicenter of the COVID-19 is. You must stay at home. Trapped. Alone. In my castle of isolation. Lost in a timeless abyss. Tormented by thoughts, haunted by memories, alone, a voice knocks at my solitude. Madness surely, it questions with each knock, and knocks, 
and knocks. Now. And knocks. Can I come in now? Now. Now. I'm telling Daddy. No, stop! He's doing his eternal monologues again. Krishan, cut that out. She is my madness. I know her scheming ways. I know what she wants. It's my turn to self-isolate. This is my sanctuary. I will never surrender. Resistance is futile. No more will I succumb to her demands. No more. I will conquer her castle. She is worse than the coronavirus. I am worse than the coronavirus. I am the cure to her unscrupulous. I can hear both your internal monologues. Stop it! <laughs> Resistance is future. <laughs> I love that. I because I love some Star Trek. Yeah, I spoke to uh, I spoke to Chandra, the dad, who's off camera, obviously shouting at the kids at the end. And I said to him, you must be a huge Trekkie to put that line in. <laughs> You've got to be. Yeah. And he was, yeah. So uh, I, I'd like to thank you both for uh, coming on the podcast. And, yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm not sure how our show, we're, gonna, we're just structuring our showcase at the moment on the 20th. It's going to be live on YouTube, but I think it's, it's for three o'clock GMT. So that's five, five hours before that. That's when it's going to be live. Uh, so yeah thank you both so much and Cynthia fantastic job Alex great job thank with you. the directing and writing and uh, thank you for scaring me the, the, something. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking I'm not joking uh, seat cushions just fell down the side of the room just to scare me a bit more <laughs> but no, I think oh, one last thing the choice of music was really strong as well I think it worked really well had this kind of Resident Evil uh, Resident Evil vibe mm -hmm. to it uh, the 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 composed Donald. or the uh, the the beginning music. <laughs> I think the beginning music sets it up nicely because you can see that Cynthia's character is gonna you know go out to a party, getting ready, yeah. and yeah. and then the composed stuff. That's the that's the Resident Evil kind of uh, haunted hill kind of thing, you know. The, yeah. that, those are composer Donald Kwan, who has a uh, uh, also a background on having composed uh, music for 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 um for television and films many yeah. and he did our he did we did one of those 48 hour film challenges oh cool and uh he, had he did the music for that he did the music for that we did that last uh last fall and that was a uh, that was a whirlwind experience that was stressful yeah. but um funny but, story about the band at the beginning actually the band is called sea spot run and the lead singer is my first cousin once removed his name is oh, Chris. right. Okay. They let us use their music. For yeah. That. So yeah. So it's my my wife's <laughs> who plays Cynthia's mother in the in the movie, but it's my wife's first cousin. So um, yeah. And, she. Uh, I've got to say, she was so scary at the door. <laughs> <laughs> she has. She's very. Oh, uh, I think the lighting the lighting worked really well for the character and the camera intent that you had going yeah. into the door. The very first shot that worked a dream because it gave obviously perspective and based on your experience you know knew what you were doing with that so yeah uh I, I loved it and congrats to you both for the film and uh more power to you cynthia well done thank you and uh i look forward to seeing uh future shorts as well so i'll keep tabs on that and uh, yeah so and all of our updates are, are on uh, instagram on isolation film festival uh so all right we'll we'll keep an eye on that absolutely cool. yeah well, thank you yeah. very much for having us thank you so much i uh, hope I hope everyone is staying uh, healthy and uh, your hands. safe over there. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've been isolated for nine weeks now. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> from going work, working on a, on a in a big group of people doing video productions to on your own in an office, it's very odd. But, uh, yes, yeah, we get used to it. And it's the it's the least we can do for people, you know. So, yeah, both stay safe and uh, thank you very much, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for doing this. Thanks. See you now. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.